everyone. Today we're going to talk about the Pythagorean Theorem, which is very important to know for the GED test when you're dealing with problems that have right triangles in them. How do you know when you have a right triangle? So if you look at this triangle right here, and you look at this, this little thing in the corner here that kind of looks like a box, that's a dead giveaway that you have a right triangle. So we see here that we have three sides on the triangle. Here, this side here, we can call side A. This side down here, we can call side B. And they come together right here to make this 90 degree angle, which again is what this little box type thing in the corner here represents. So if you have a triangle with a 90 degree angle, it's a right triangle, you can then apply the Pythagorean theorem. So there's one more thing we should know about right triangles. So again, little box type thing here, 90 degree angle. The side directly across from the 90 degree angle, which in this case is our side C, that is the largest side of our triangle here. That side is called the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the largest side of the right triangle. And again, the side across from the little box type thing here, which again, little box type thing, 90 degree angle, side of the triangle across from that is the largest side of the triangle, also known as the hypotenuse. So side C here is our hypotenuse. So if we look at the formula here, this is really a really, really, really important formula here. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And so for the actual GED test, you're not going to have to memorize any of the formulas. They're going to be given to you. But this is a really good one here to have, um, be able to rattle this one off right off the top of your head, as you're probably going to use it a lot. And it's, it's really easy to get problems right um, when you understand how to apply this formula. So the types of problems that you would use this for would be, say that we, we know, for example, the length of side A. The length of side A, say we know what that is. Well, and say that the length of side B here, say we know what that is. But we don't know the length of side C. So if we wanted to find side C, the length of side C, what we could do is we would use the Pythagorean theorem formula. So we would we could take the length of side A, plug it up into the formula here for, for A, and we would do the same then with the length of side B plug it in here to our formula for B. And so we would do A squared plus B squared. That's going to give us C squared. So if we have C squared, we would then take the square root of that. And if we take the square root of C squared, that gives us side C. So the Pythagorean theorem, as we see here, it's used a lot of times in problems to find the length of an unknown side of a triangle. So it could also be maybe you, you're given the length of side C and you know the length of side B, but you want to find A, um, or you know the length of A and you know the length of C and you want to find B. There's different variations, but uh, the general idea is that you're going to use it in problems to find the unknown side of a right triangle. So whenever you have a problem with a right triangle or any problem with a triangle on the GED test and you're stuck, um, consider whether or not it could be a Pythagorean theorem problem. Okay, so now we're going to look at an example problem here. And the question is asking us, what is the length of side C? So now on the test, um, it might be in inches, centimeters, meters. For our purposes here, we don't care about the units. We just want to get the basics down. So to find the length of side C, since we have a right triangle, we are going to bring in our Pythagorean theorem here. So for side A, we can use the value five and for side B we can use three. So we're going to plug five into the formula for A and we're going to plug three in for B. So let's go ahead and do that. So we would do five squared plus three squared And that's going to give us C squared. So 5 squared, how do we do that? Do we do 5 times 2? 
or do we do 5 times 5? Well, hopefully you know that in order to do 5 squared, we would just multiply 5 by 5. So 5 times 5 is 25. And so the same thing here with 3 squared. If we don't do 3 times 2, we do 3 times 3. 3 times itself. So 3 squared gives us 9. So we now have 25 plus 9. And 25 plus 9 is going to give us 34. So we now know that c squared equals 34. Okay, so we go to our answers. We say, hey, up oh, B. Okay, we're done. Well, actually, this is incorrect. And the important thing here is to realize that we've just solved for C squared. We still have to take the square root to get C. So this is a common mistake. Um, sometimes people will stop here at this step. Um, and so everything was right up until here except for the fact that we need to remember that we actually need to solve for c, not c squared. So we know that c squared equals 34. So let's take the square root of both sides here. And so we take the square root of c squared, and that just leaves us with c. And so here, we could try to simplify the square root of 34, but in this case, we don't need to. Since the answer here, C has square root of 34 here. So that's what we did here. Um, essentially, we just matched A. The 5 here, that's going to be our, our A value. The 3 here, that's going to be our B value. Plug them in, um, squared each term, added them up, and found the C squared. We then took the square root to get our answer. On to the second example problem. So if you want, go ahead and pause the video and try to do this one on your own first. Okay, so here we're asked to find uh, what is the length of the hypotenuse. And so remember that the hypotenuse is the longest side of the triangle. It's the side that's directly across from the 90 degree angle. And so here, that is going to be this side here. Visually, we can see, hey, that's the longest side compared to the other two. Um, but also, we see that the 90 degree angle is right here. And across from it, the side we see is length 27. Um, 27 inches, centimeters, meters, again, uh, it's not clear what the units are here, but it doesn't matter. We're just trying to get the basics down. And so we see that answer C is going to be the correct answer. We're almost done. So we have one more example problem to go over. Um, so go ahead. If you would like to pause the video, try it on your own first. So here we want to find side A. We know the other two sides of the triangle. So let's go ahead and review the Pythagorean theorem. And so it looks like here our B is going to be 2. So side B of the triangle is length 2, and so our C here we know is going to be 4, and so A is what we want to find. So let's go ahead and try to plug in what we can here. So our A squared term, we do not have that, so we're just going to leave that go. Um, but we do know B, so B is going to be 2, so we'll put in 2 squared. And that's equal to c squared. So our 4 is equal to c here. So we can write 4 squared. Okay, so 2 squared, we would do 2 times 2, which equals 4. So we can rewrite this as a squared plus 4. And that's equal to 4 squared. 4 times 4, that gives us 16. So we can replace that with 16. So we're almost done now. Uh, we just want to use some algebra here. And we want to try to get the a squared term by itself on both sides. So to do that, we can subtract 4 on both sides. And the result is going to be a squared 
Let me make that a little bit better here. So we have a squared equals 12. 16 minus 4 is 12. And so like we did in the last video, we would take the square root of both sides. So square root a squared. Uh, let's see. We have square root a squared equals the square root of 12. And so that gives us the answer is C. Um, this is not really that helpful here because it looks like we either D or E is going to be right. So which is right, A or B? So here we're going to go over a trick here, which has to do with simplifying square roots. And so the best way to think of this is to look at 12 and think of factors that multiply together to be to give us 12. So we know that 1 and 12 will work. Uh, 2 and 6. And also 3 and 4. So if we look at these pairs of numbers, uh, the pairs being 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, uh, do we know what the square root is for any of these numbers? So hopefully you are aware that the square root of 4 is 2, and the reason is because 2 squared gives us 4, so if we go the other way, we take the square root of 4, it gives us 2. So we want to pay close attention to this pair right here. So we can rewrite the square root of 12 as the square root of 3 times 4. And we can simplify that even further here as we can say the square root of 3 times the square root of 4. Okay, so, and since we know that the square root of 4 is 2, we can finally rewrite this as 2 square root of 3. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense there. The point of the lesson is the Pythagorean theorem. It's not necessarily how to simplify square roots, but hopefully you were able to follow this. Um, and so we know that 2 square root of 3 and square root of 12 are two ways of writing the same thing, which means A and C are correct. So since A and C are correct, the final answer here is D. Okay, so let's just, let me just recap how I did that here. So we see that we have A squared, that equals 12. So to find the square root of 12 without using the calculator, all I did was I listed the factors of 12. I listed numbers that multiply together to be 12. Um, so, you know, we have 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. So you won't necessarily have to, let me just highlight this with the box here. So like on a test, if you had to take a square root without a calculator, you wouldn't necessarily have to do this. We just did this so that we can see that, hey, um, 3 and 4, the number 4, well, we know that the square root of 4 is 2. So con contrast that with 6 or with 12 um, or with 2. You know, you know what the square root of 2 is off the top of your head. You know what the square root of 6 is. Um, what about the square root of 3? So those are things that you wouldn't really know without using the calculator, except so 4 is an example of a number that we, we do know that, the square root of 4 is 2. So that's why we pick 3 and 4 here. So 3, and four, three times 4 gives 12. We can then rewrite the square root of 12 as equal to, let me reemphasize that here, the square root of 12 is equal to the square root of 3 times 4. Okay, so then we broke that up even further, and we, we rewrote it as the square root of 3 times the square root of 4. Since the square root of 4 is 2, we rewrote the square root of 4 as 2, and then we kind of pulled the 2 out front here, so that gave us 2 square root of 3. So again, if all of this, um, you know, simplifying square root stuff, if this is confusing, don't worry about it too much. Just make sure that you understand the basics of the Pythagorean theorem. So these three problems cover all the basic stuff you need to know. You might see some word problems, might see some other variations, but if you understand these problems, you should be good for the majority of cases. Um, so that's it. Thanks for watching. I uh, really hope you found this video helpful.